Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue, turning my phone off. Oh, okay. good call. Uh, you know, I cannot believe that we have not done this episode before. <laughs> I guess somebody will write in and tell us if we have. I really don't think we have. You know why we don't know what episodes we've done? Why? Because we talk all the time. All the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk about everything, so we think we've talked about it all. Well, yeah. I, I have an example of us talking. Okay. Okay. And uh, people know us by our voice, apparently. So I'm coming out of uh, a class with my husband out of uh, Acro, right? Mm-hmm. And you know where it is over there, Yoga Soul, and it's right next to the, the Talking Horse Theater, right? So I come out. It is freaking pitch dark, right? And I am a dog just showed up. You're going to hear her <laughs> prancing feet. I thought I locked her out. So anyway. Um, what I, what I was talking to Jerry about what we had just done in class, it's pitch dark out and all of a sudden, like, you know, like about four car spaces over behind another car, I hear somebody say, is that ZD? Is that ZD talking? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, somebody in the middle of the night recognizes my voice. So it happened to be. Nora Dietzel, who is a fan on Self Sewn Wardrobe and also a local. I guess we should call them members and not fans. <laughs> oh, do I, I call her a fan? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no, oh my I god, think... I am like my head is so big. I think that Nora and Lynn, you know, well, my... but I'm a fan of hers. I'm, yes, yes. yes we Nora were... does a lot of theater, and there's a theater. There's a community type theater there. And actually, just bringing this to connect to the group again, that place, like the physical place where you were, you know, is close to that theater, and right? Nora posted a an exhibit that she did. There's a fabric exhibit. Yes, a textile Textile exhibit. Yeah. So if you saw pictures of that in the group, that's where mom was. But anyway, I I went home go thinking, oh my god, like not only am I spotted in restaurants and people take pictures of me from afar, (laughs) which I found out is happening, but. It's just my voice. And I was like, why does she recognize my voice? Okay, the reason she recognized... You've you've been in a couple plays with her. The reason she recognized your voice, Mom, and I love you to death, but, like, you scream talk, okay? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't. We're up here in the studio. My baby's sleeping a few rooms over, and Mom's like, oh, you're tracing out that (laughs) pattern. And Mallory is very quiet. I'm very quiet. Yeah, uh huh. No one hears her from. Well, no one. Okay, I wanted... we were on what a I... beach no. when you were what eight years old, and somebody heard you talking from like a mile away. What I what I wanted to say was I got in trouble in school all the time. Everyone would be talking, but I'd but be they the would one hear you who'd get in trouble. And right. I even had a teacher say because I was normally like a pretty good kid, but I like got I had to sit. Had a inside. talking issue. I had to sit inside for recess right. or something, and she was, you know, she was like, "Hey, Mallory, I know that everyone was talking, mm-hmm. but you know, Miss So and So, like we were at, in computers or something. She heard you. She goes, your voice carries. That's right. And I was like, I didn't know what that meant. It's like third <laughs> grade, and I didn't know what your voice carrying meant. But now I do. we we can project. So well, let's get on to the. I taught my children to project. Yes, and I will say again. You're welcome, all three of you, for being able to sing without a microphone. Yep. And I remember being in Hillary's um, choir class one day. I was, I was working on costumes. And I remember, you know, the infamous Bob Bohan going, everyone, we need more volume. Everyone, except Hillary and Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they were drowning out the rest of the choir. Okay. Well, we're probably going to get dinged for, uh, you know, going off on a We're talking too about early. something besides sewing. Yeah, but that's Talking why it, and sewing go together. That's why it can be difficult to edit our podcast. Sorry, Sam, that we scream talk sometimes. <laughs> and we think the dog is secured away. Yes. All right. Sewing machine repair. So this just came up in the group. I can't believe we have not done an episode about this. Excited to talk about it. A little backstory. Uh, ZD worked in a sewing machine dealership for about 10, 15 years. Whoa. And then she bought it and then ran it for 11 years. Right. I can't remember. Involved for a good 
25, 30 years. Yeah. Yes. And that tech who was, uh, who first owned the store, it was the tech and his sister. They owned right. the store. And that tech came with us when we bought the store. We got a new tech, but like we have been around sewing machine, this sewing machine repair shop right. environment, right? right. Well, and you and I have about. both gone to um, uh-huh. technical classes. I remember Terry, the tech. Terry the Tech. Terry the oh, tech. how cute. When I was like 14 or 15, he was going to teach me how to service the mechanical uh, machines. And he did, and yeah. He taught me on the mechanical Berninas, and they had coated wires, and, um, you know, B was not for blue. It was for blau, right? Because it was in uh, German. Was, yeah. And, like, and then he was like, an S is for Schwartz, which is black, right? Yeah. So I remember like learning all of these yes. things, and he graded me on a few repairs. He let oh, me repair he? machines, yeah. and he came to me and he was like, "I'm gonna give you a B because you know this, this, this." Right. And he was, it was great, and uh, he gave me a lot of working knowledge. And I remember when I was still at that tender young age, you were teaching a class, and someone like messed up their bobbin area yeah. on their Bernina. I'm pretty sure it's a threading issue, right? And there was just probably a, the bobbin and backwards. More they than were just jammed too, oh, okay. right? And or I didn't put up their presser foot. That's right. And I went to the back and I fixed that machine. And I remember you being really proud of me. You were like, "You got it. You got it working." Like right. We were trying to keep this all like really, you know, right. low profile. That where we were letting a fourteen-year-old play well, on no, the machine. Well, no, no, that oh. this lady like she, she wouldn't be embarrassed. Oh, and so I that see. She could get back to class. I and, see. You know, all that. I don't. I don't. Oh think my any, gosh, we were being nice. We were being nice. <laughs> We were being nice to okay, somebody. Let's log that in. Okay. <laughs> I was 14 and we were being nice. <laughs> so, um, yes. So I've got that technical knowledge. You have more technical knowledge, I think, than I do. Oh, I don't. Well, I think I have more experience. Yeah. As far as knowledge and like um, formal training, I, we might have about the, about the same. same. I don't know. Did you ever go to Baby Lock for their tech course? I didn't go to the okay. full week long thing. Yeah. Like now I, did. Had, I did do that. Yeah. I, well, I also had gone to a lot of Bernina stuff too. Yeah. Um, but um, you took a lot of stuff from Doug. Right, you right. Did. And so Doug actually, uh, he is the Baby Lock um, technical as like, well education. As your dad, Jerry, has taken a lot too. Yeah. Yes. Um, but Doug is the Baby Lock technical education director, and he actually they started a new YouTube series with him. He is very good online. Yeah, yeah. I love I love yeah. his voice. He's got a very nice. Now deep we voice. are talking about some online stuff that you might not have access to. That might be no, only no, no. dealing. Is was, there some no, other that's stuff? Public. Okay. That's why I mentioned right. it. Yeah. So right. he. They started like a, a for the public YouTube series right. with him, right. which I love. So, so it's th- kind of troubleshooting stuff. That can help you to get to know your machine better. Right. So when you are going to, if you have a problem with your machine, um, you know, we've done a troubleshooting episode. Okay. Yes. ZD's Tips. I can for, barely remember that, but yes, we've done it. It's called ZD's Tips for Troubleshooting. The question that prompted this episode was literally, um, and I think it's Amy, uh, uh, asked this, she said, my manual says that I don't need to oil my machine and that I should get it professionally oiled. Do I need to go get it professionally oiled or is there something I can do myself? She was kind of asking, she was like kind of framing it in the way of like, do I need to pay to get this done or right. can I save money by doing something myself? To which I responded, yes and yes, yes. right? Well, I think I, I want to bring up this aspect. It's not only trying to save money. Like sometimes I find doing it myself, sometimes think all things, not just sewing machines, it's just more efficient. Well, I don't have to take it in. I don't have to wait for it. If I, you know, if I can do a drop of oil or change a screw or, or whatever I can do, mm-hmm. sometimes there are people that like to do it themselves. Well, I think you need to be doing some right, maintenance right. yourself. It, that's what I mean. There are people that like to know the guts of their machine. Now, some people don't like that. They, sure. It, 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 you know, it, it's frightening to them or intimidating or whatever. Or they just don't, you know, I'm not going to fool with that. I can get that done elsewhere. Yeah. So everybody has like a different attitude about how much they want to deal with the innards, so to speak, or, you know, the what maintenance of their machine yeah so let's talk about what you can do at home and kind of what you should be doing yeah there are some things you should be doing. okay let's get let's get started on that so the first thing you need to do if you're thinking boy i think my machine needs to be serviced or something uh this isn't if you have some like fatal error and then you do this okay this is maybe every couple weeks maybe every few projects 
you need maybe to, every one big project. Yeah, depending on right your level of sewing. You know, sometimes for us a project is like a few seams. Right. Sometimes it's a big to do. You know, but this is kind of the maintenance you should be doing yourself. You need to clean your machine. Okay. The first thing that a tech will do, okay, besides check your needle and your thread and things you should have done, is they will open up your machine and they will clean it. Because if there's gunk someplace inhibiting something, it's not going to work. Yeah. So let's talk about what you need to do, okay? You need to get out a vacuum and a brush, and you can get a mini vacuum attachment kit. Which is really a good idea. Uh, you know, we would have a shop vac. Uh, you get a brush, and you... And when she says brush, mm -hmm. I like a lot of times like a makeup brush or a small paint brush. Like, yep. I... That's fairly soft so that I can sweep. Sweeping. You're sweeping towards the vacuum. Sweeping and sucking, right? Right. And you want to open your machine up as much as is possible for your comfort level. Right. And for your machine's comfort level. That's correct. If you've got a mechanical machine that's fairly easy to kind of open up a little bit, go ahead. And older machines... Like the top lifts off, yeah, and you can see the whole, you Open can see up. the whole, all the mechanisms. Open it up. And Open it up. Even on, uh, we know that because we used to find toys in them. Yep, like <laughs> children would open them up. You know, put toys in. Even on a machine like the Baby Lock Sophia, there's a little on the top left of the machine. You know, to the left of the needle, above it, there's one screw holding right. that piece of casing on. Right. It's not hard to get off. It's not hard to put back on. Which is the area where, like, your needle bar is going up and down. And there's no electronics over there. No electronics or com circuit, circuit boards. boards. No computerization no right there. No right. screens over there. Um, that's easy to take off and just brush and suck, mm -hmm. okay? So in the bobbin area. Well, right? another thing, okay, besides the brush, uh -huh. is what, mal you know, you may find lint or dirt or gunk, as I call it, is sort of like... Where lint and oil has come together yeah. <laughs> and made this like gluey stuff. Okay, I think gunk is a great word. Uh, yeah, gunk. It's like gunk, and like a Q-tip is great for that. I roll. I take the Q-tip. I roll the 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 cotton. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know. Q-tip might not be an international term. A cotton swab. Mm -hmm. So you know, I will take the end of that cotton swab and twist it in a clockwise way with my finger and tighten up the uh -huh. cotton. And then roll it in the same direction on the gunk, and it will pick it up. Yeah. Don't roll it counterclockwise. That unrolls that cotton. Right. So, and then if you if you are just going to use the Q-tip on the lint, like on the non-gunky lint. Cotton swab. Yeah, the, the cotton swab, it makes um, lint cotton candy. Yes. And it's very satisfying. Right. Uh, so the Q-tip can grab for you. The brush will grab. Our main thing here is don't use canned air. Yeah. Don't. Do anything. Don't blow. Don't even if you have an air compressor. Don't blow into the machine. You don't know where the stuff is going. You don't have control over where that lint is going. So, side note: if you see, oh, and the canned air adds uh, moisture, right? Right. So, so it, the canned air adds moisture. You can blow lint back into the machine where you can't get to it, and it can really gunk up, right? Concrete up. Yes, right? it does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's then. Then the, what happens? That gunk does turn to like a concrete almost. Yeah, it does. It starts out kind of like a glue, and then it starts to solidify. So you want to be taking lint out of your machine. If you see an air compressor or if you see canned air on a sewing machine technician's workbench, this might be because they'll use it when the machine when they get it completely it is, naked it is naked it is stripped down there's no way to force anything in. and usually they you you know they should be using a compressor and not canned we, air our techs didn't use canned air no they used a compressor and that's why i brought up compressor cuz a compressor doesn't always add the moisture. moisture like the canned air has a propellant in it yeah but you know for you as a lay person to use that um, compressed air, this is just a warning. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a great idea. So suck that stuff out with a vacuum. You can use your hose. That mini vacuum attachment kit, it attaches to the hose, okay? Right. Um, or and not a mini vacuum. No. We want, like, the big suck. Big on suck, a, on small a big vacuum, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Right. So you are, um, you've sucked out all that lint, and then... Depending on the degree of 
like comfort you have with your machine and also the type of machine because right. some machines there's information on the internet about where um you can oil yes older machines will have oil wells right and things like that absolutely if you've got a newer machine okay there's only really a couple places that you as a consumer should probably be putting oil right. I would say with the older mechanical machines, uh-huh. it's, I oh man, just I, I need some sort of disclaimer. Um, disclaimer, but it's pretty hard to hurt them. You, I mean, yes, you can get the timing screwed up. Yes, you can put a needle in wrong, you know, but, you know, if you're gentle and, and all of this, most of the time you're just working with, you know, cogs and... Yeah, you know, so, it's, it's mechanical, so, so you was, can see what's happening. So I was working on an electronic machine when Terry was teaching me about those old arenas, right. right? So they they were electronic, but he said you need to look for places where you see metal on metal, right? And that's where oil goes, metal, right? And that is in your life, women, in your life, men, mm-hmm. girls, mm-hmm. boys, everybody, like metal on metal needs lubrication, right? That is why you see in some of your manuals you don't need to oil the bobbin area because you're not metal on metal that's right you're some sort of plastic or composite on metal and that can be an advantage sometimes yes yes so if you are a person who you know broke a needle on their machine and your needle gets down in your bobbin area and it's metal on metal you're like probably wearing a groove in right. two places. If your bo- if your machine has a plastic bobbin case and you get some you know traumatic event right. happening down there, that plastic bobbin case might break and is easily and less expensive, easy right. to easier to replace and probably less expensive. Because right. you will wear the groove on the plastic and not on the metal piece that's in the machine. That's right. So it's easier to get to. It's easier to service. It's less expensive. I don't always respond to everyone who does this in the group, but I do not agree with vilifying plastic wholesale no. in machines. And it's just better. And a lot of people who think that they have an all metal machine are you, wrong. Are, you, you don't <laughs> you don't. You've, you have a nylon or composite gear in there. It's very common. And I'm talking about the machines that weigh a thousand pounds that feel like they're metal that are really good boat anchors when they're not working. But there could very easily be a composite gear in there. So when you say they're better because they're all metal, be aware of what you're speaking about. Yeah. And another thing is not all metal is great. Not, and, and those older machines that have a metal casting right. have worse plastics in them yes. than exist today. Exactly, because, of course, they were plastics and composite type fa- ma- fabrics, materials. <laughs> uh, why do I think in fabric? Uh, materials were in their infancy. That's right. Yes. Okay, so if you have a newer machine that might like be electronic where you can choose the stitches and stuff and you can take the throat plate off. Right. You might be able to take you need that. To take the th- you need to know how to take your throat plate off. Yeah, and you can take off that upper left you know, casing there right. above the needle. Um, after you've cleaned it, after you've brushed and sucked and Q-tipped and the cotton swab and whatnot, take a clean cotton swab and put some light sewing machine oil on it and look where metal on metal right. is. You can turn your hand wheel. You should turn your power off your machine, probably unplug it. Cover, cover they tell our, you to unplug. The cover unplug, our butts there. Unplug is what you should yeah. do. So you'll be able to see, okay, I could put a little, you know, drop of oil here. I'm telling you to put it on the Q-tip. You should also have the needle out of your machine. Yeah. I'm telling you to put it on the Q-tip because you don't want to over-oil. Right. Because you don't want oil then dripping out on your project and at some point. And oil does drip. It, oh, yeah. It follows gravity. Yep. I also, when you bring your hand wheels that your needle's all the way down, even though your needle's out of your machine, you know, the needle bar is all the way down toward the feed dogs and the throat plate. I will just swab that needle bar a little bit right there. You know, I do, with oil, and I right? don't do that with a Q-tip. You know what I use? What? The pen? I, no. Or? No, no. I use usually a piece, a scrap of cotton fabric that oh. I put oil on. Okay. And I have it like sort of between. I like that. Yeah. I like the Q-tip. Yeah. You know, also, sometimes a little bit of oil on a Q-tip can clean that needle bar. Oil will clean off oil. Right. You know, the... That, you know, anything that is of the same material dissolves or is a solvent to that material. So if you've got gunk that's not moving, 
sometimes it's the oil that will get it off. You know. Now, I've used alcohol swabs inside if I have saw gunk that I could get. But I went back and oiled. And lighter fluid, right? Like we, well, we use no, that. No, we don't use lighter fluid. No one ever used lighter fluid as a solvent <laughs> to clean a sewing machine, especially um, in our... Um, you know, county when the fire inspectors come that's and right. inspect. Yes. yes. No one we, ever did we've that. We've never used lighter fluid. Uh, so that's what you can do at home. All right? right. So so if somebody says, you know, I don't know what Amy's situation was. I don't know if she hadn't gotten her mm-hmm. machine serviced in five years. Right. Um, I don't know if she was just reading the manual and thinking about the future. But doing that stuff yourself is necessary and then we do recommend getting your machine serviced professionally right. once a year like cleaning your machine you know is just like an everyday thing it's that, part you, of that you're you should be responsible for like washing your clothes or I, yeah. i'm trying to think you know sweeping your floor brushing your teeth yeah brushing your uh, you know it is something that should be incorporated into you your you sewing now if you plan to put your machine away for a while, it should be cleaned and it should be oiled if it if it requires that, okay? And then when you bring it out, the same thing. It might need oil again because like in a car that sits in a garage, the oil follows gravity and it will come off of certain parts. I guess uh, in our studio here, um, on our Baby Lock Sergers... There are a few things that we would do personally that I would not tell a lay person to do. Yeah. And so I'm not going to say it. Right. <laughs> but things for the for the baby lock sergers where you can't get inside and everything like that, you're really if you vacuum it's amazing what you will keep them very clean. And, and I will tell you the things that hurt sergers, all sergers, yeah, is the accumulation of lint. Mm-hmm. Because when we talked about that gunk, what gunk is, is the lint pulling the oil from the machine and the parts that need it, right? So the more lint, the more you are pulling oil away from the parts that need it. That's right. So, I mean, you should be sucking that. Well, we use our sur- that I, I use my surger so much, I should be sucking it out every day. Yeah, you, you yeah. really need to. Every time I use it. It makes so much lint. Sergers make lint. They overcast and make lint. That's, That's what right. they do. That's so if what you they keep do. that clean, you're really going to be good until right. your yearly service. And I will tell you, um, if you want to service, if you have the thought you're going to service your serger, it really does need to be taken down to naked. Yeah. And when I do that at home, I actually take it outside because that's how much lint is in there. <laughs> and then I start, you know... Shaking out the lint, but I have that sucker stripped. It, you don't even recognize it as a serger. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, and so that is something when you're going to take apart your machine. Well, let's take a break and talk about what you shouldn't do at home. Okay. <laughs> okay. Break time. Hey, Mom. Yeah. Um, you can feel free to compliment me. Oh, no. On, on what? On this. What? My feel free to compliment me enamel lapel pin. Oh, Mallory, every time that you hear something wrong, are you going to make a lapel pin about it? Maybe. Um, do you, do you want one? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, Isn't it teal? Yes, it's teal and pink, and you can get one by going to sewhere.com slash compliment. Just so you know, I'm not putting it on my lapel. It's going on my hat. Oh, it's going on your hat. It could be a hat pin, too. Okay, all right. So if you want to get in on the feel free to compliment me uh, in in on the club, go to sewhere.com slash compliment and order our very first sewhere.com lapel pin. Sew, 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 sewing out loud. All right, and we're back. So I think this is going to end up being two episodes where we talk about what happens in a repair shop on the next episode. Well, there's so many kinds of machines, too. I know, I know. There's and so, so many approaches to what's out there. I thought that would be great um, to do uh, as another episode because now we're going to talk about – you know, everyone's going to do whatever the heck they want after they listen to this podcast, Mom, right? Yeah. yeah. They're going to tell me that I'm dumb. 
that I shouldn't have told them not to open their machine or right. whatever. Yeah. Th- okay. That's silly. So if you I'm, – I'm looking at our machines. I can see them from our recording booth. <laughs> <laughs> and, Area. And there are some Table. parts you can take apart, like I said. But there are some parts where when you're trying to take that casing off the machine, it isn't easy. Okay. And why it's complicated? Why is it complicated, Mom? Is to keep the consumer from getting in there. Now, are they trying to keep the consumer from getting in there in order to, like, perpetuate this, uh, like, money-grabbing scheme of making them go to repair shops and people are making so much money off of sewing machine repairs? Well, uh, I can vouch for Baby Lock in the fact that you barely, hardly ever need it repaired. Yeah, we, like, like, yeah. like, like. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like, if you treat a baby lock nice, it needs very little maintenance. It very well, maybe it needs maintenance, but very little service as far as problems. When we went down to be in <laughs> baby, baby lock, lock exclusive, only. yes, exclusive's a nicer word, right? Yes. You know, a baby lock exclusive dealer. It was... The tech work dropped by two-thirds. Yes, and yes. it was delicious. It yes. was like they come in for their they, basic service. They came service. in for their ba- basic annual checkup, and, and that they, was it. And they went out, and it was beautiful. If somebody came in with a problem, it was something we could handle like at the check-in desk because the needle was in backwards or not in, up far enough or they had threaded without. You know, it would be one of the – that would – those were our biggest problems. Yeah, with it, was, um, it was yeah. It was. really nice, yeah. you know. So I don't think – I think them – I think – I believe, let's put it that way, I believe the reason it's hard to get into those areas is they're trying to save you some heartache. Right. So if you open your machine in in a way, if you try to get your machine naked, you could be taking a risk. So talk right. about that, but right? There's computer boards. Yeah. There's circuit boards. All of these things are very delicate. We've also had machines come in where the circuit boards have been put back in incorrectly. Wrong. Yeah. And the, it's pretty funny because, you know, the machine, like, goes backwards or it gives you a weird message. Or, or it shocks you or, or yeah, something. Yeah, there, you know? there, <laughs> there are some things that it does, you know, and we've gone in and basically been able to adjust that right. by replugging in or, or whatever, you and know. And this is, this is a stereotype. Uh, it's going to sound like a stereotype, I guess. Right. But it just happens so often at the store that I'm going to tell you about it. This occurrence is a, a, a woman would come in with her sewing machine I mean, gosh, this happened like this is so, hundreds this of is, times. I mean, you, you know, say it's a stereotype, but it's just a reality. Yeah, it just, you yeah. know, if it, if it sounds stereotypey to you, I'm talking from experience here. A woman would come in with her machine, she'd say, and she'd have it in a box top or something. <laughs> yeah, and or a rubber made, a big rubber made container. Yes, and she would be like, <laughs> and well, it was in parts. <laughs> it wasn't working, and so I, I, I acted frustrated, and then my husband said, well, I can fix it. I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so uh, then he would take it apart, and then he wouldn't be – he'd put it back together, and it wouldn't work, or he wouldn't be able to put it back together. Right. Or maybe he wasn't an engineer at all. I don't know. Right. He just – someone thought they could do that, and then they bring their machine in in a Rubbermaid container, you know. And guess what? It costs more to get it fixed when it comes in in parts. <laughs> it can, you know, especially if they've, like, not – if it takes a lot more time. Right. Or if they really have, like, messed something up further. Right. Or you have to call them and they bring in those extra parts oh, that yeah. they thought they didn't need. You know, we are, okay, <laughs> there should be something that looks like this that you took off the machine at this point right. and you need to bring it back in. You know, um, uh, like, right. you know, uh, so once again, just a reminder so wh- that, that there's there's troubleshooting and there's the basic maintenance, but like at some point you might need right. to bring it in. And when we're talking electronics, yeah, there are circuit boards, there are things like that. Honestly, there's nothing you can do about it if you get there because you can't purchase that circuit board. Yeah, probably. You you have to be a dealer. Now, a couple people in the group said, I replaced like um, like a spark plug or like something. Like a diode yeah, or something or, or know, whatever. A spark yeah. plug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it, your machine probably doesn't have, have a spark, spark plug. plug unless it can drive you to work. There you go. So <laughs> replacing spark plugs and things like you know there are right, some there there are some small electronic elements. And if, yes, if you are 
But you have to be careful. You do. Because if those are the wrong, if those are rated properly, if they're rated for the wrong voltage or something, you can, then you can blow something else. Yes. 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 So, you know, you're taking a risk. Is it possible that you could fix it yourself? Is it, you know, I've seen people say, I've got this older, you know, such and such machine and there's this YouTube video because everyone's little thing goes out. Or they had the same problem. Yeah. And and they can fix it, you know. So it's certainly possible. But when you do get into the more modern ones that have the circuit board, and stuff, you just better off taking it to your dealer right. or a repair now, store. Now, the way we ran our dealership in our tech area, if you came in with a specific problem to get fixed, you got the cleaning and the oiling and adjusting generally along with that. Yeah. So you got a full service plus your problem was dealt with also. Like, Somebody, you know, the tech didn't go in a dirty machine and just change the circuit board and leave it dirty. Well, yeah. yeah and I know. think that's a good that's a good thing to explore right. in the next episode too, because where we talk about like right. what happens in sure. a repair shop because what and what you should expect. Right. You know. So what we're telling you is the those machines that have areas that are difficult to take the housing off of, mm-hmm. you know, that there's not a welcome uh, mat out that you know you open this door or just unscrew you this just thing take this one screw or out. flip this lever <laughs> or what if there's no welcome mat into getting into a certain part of your machine it is more like turn around go back this could be dangerous Don't, I'd turn back if I were you I'd turn back yes i turn back yes so on some of the things with casings I just want to talk about this real quick because I would come housings. across the, ha- it's housings. Housings. Casings, casings is on a sausage okay <laughs> With housings. Uh, Unless you refer to your machine as your sausage. Okay. Um, there's crotch sausages. There so, you go. You know, there's, crotch sa- sausages. there's sausages and sewing. On the housings, sometimes the order is important. Some- yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The sometimes. The littlest, bittiest order. Yes. And then sometimes you're like, okay, if I just can snap this in here a little bit, you know, and you can break it. And then when it breaks, you your little piece okay, goes flying. Okay, that housing is... <laughs> First of all, it's usually really hard to replace because they don't really make it as a part like the other parts. So they have to like go over to wherever that housing is made, like Vietnam I don't or know. what. I will say, you know, I, and it's not you get you have to pay a lot of money for this plastic piece. I, I will say on the more recent machines, it seemed like it wasn't too difficult. It was better, to get those. easier. But then on like the older models, like a twenty. Well, you know, we'll talk about this next episode too. But I had somebody get really upset that they're like twenty five year old machine that you couldn't get right. like this certain part for it, and I right. was like, yeah, they don't make it anymore. You know, right. it's twenty. Five years old, and uh, anyway, you're generally your warranty says they will make the parts for 20, 25 years when you buy your machine. You can so, you can ask that. So we would, yeah, we would have difficulty with right. that. Now sometimes we could sort of like you know rig something up. All but. I want, all I want to say here, you guys, when people like started getting mad about that, I would get, I would have to like calm myself down because I would want to say to them, so how old is your vacuum cleaner? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because if you've got a 25 year old vacuum cleaner, I bet you can't get a housing part for it either. We'll say, we'll save that for next yeah. episode. Too. Well, I mean, we already said Well, we can it, say yeah. it again. So, uh. We will, us, repeat ourselves. I know, right? Um, hey, repeating yourself is not always that bad. No. It I reinforces mean, the information. It is necessary sometimes. I've repeated things to you a lot. <laughs> Um, so when you are when you are going to, you know, clean out what you can, do that. Okay, once a year. We recommend bringing in once a year. This is the last thing I want to cover here, I think. And that's a general statement. That That's what? It's a, a starting place. Okay, when we owned a store, our basic service was like eighty four ninety five. Now, we've been closed for a year, and we were very reasonable. I've, I have heard people be like, what you know? That's right. half of what I'm charged, right. or so. And, well, and I guess maybe some other people depends think that's on, expensive. Depends on the market you're in, the area, area all yeah. kinds of stuff. So we would charge eighty four ninety five, I think, or seventy four ninety five, or something. And some people have bought sewing machines that are seventy five dollars. Okay. Yes. So to be perfectly honest, from a consumer economic standpoint. I mean, you're sort of better off 
buying that machine, servicing it yourself, running it into the ground, right? Throwing it away and buying a new one, yeah. And but when we think of that from like a waste perspective, from a carbon footprint, yeah, from from all of that, then that can be a little sad, wasteful, a little wasteful, right? Um, so. Think about that. Right. As you get into your machine, what do you want to spend? You know, I'm I'm not saying anything is right or wrong, no. but But there, don't be alarmed don't if you buy alarmed. a seventy five dollar yeah. or ninety dollar machine and it cost seventy five to two hundred dollars to have it serviced. It's it's a reality. Yeah. Now I probably you know, if you think about your car, of course we drive our cars into the ground, right? Yep. We put over two hundred thousand miles on them easy. You know, the less car I had to get rid of, you know, when my husband said, you need a new car. And I said, no, I don't. I love my car. I love my car. He said, you need a new car. And I'm like, why? And he goes, you need $5,000 worth of service and your car right. is worth $7,000. Right. We're not paying $5,000 on a $7,000. I had to get, like, so I went and I bought the same car. But, um, <laughs> you know, reality, this, this is the reality of it because it takes someone talent also to fix your machine right and you're paying for their talent you're paying for their years of you know what they have learned their expertise and they deserve to be paid for that well okay here's another thing don't go in and think somebody should fix your machine for nothing right that's very irritating i think that's a good thing to How, elaborate upon yeah next we'll talk about too. that next episode <laughs> well the other thing is okay, if you only spent 75 dollars 100 dollars on the machine hey Go wild taking it apart, I guess. If you yeah, don't, that's what you I, would, I would yeah. say. That's what I, it's like the people that uh, buy, unplug it and then it, go wild. Yeah, there's the people that buy the, the you know, $10, $25 machine at the um, garage sale and they would bring it in and we would say it's $30 for the tech to look at it. Right, right. You know, that was like to go, oh, is it worth saving or anything? And oh, and I only paid $25. First of all, Really not my problem. Right. I okay. Didn't I was not the there, and I did not help you make that decision right. at that point in time. We're here now, and I'm we're on the timeline now where I'm making helping you make decisions. But um, take it home and see what you can do. That's what I would do. Yeah. Look up stuff on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, YouTube is... the the crap out of it. Right. You know? That's I mean, kind of a lower go, risk go, situation. Google your situation. <laughs> now, if you spend thousands of dollars on a machine and you, you know, want to get it serviced, you you might want to, you know, And it was it. at a garage sale. Again, I was not there <laughs> yeah, right. to get, help you <laughs> with that decision. And you say it, it's a embroidery machine, but it doesn't have an embroidery in it. I was not there it's, to Mom, help you make that decision. Next episode. <laughs> That's really okay. Can't wait. That'll be the bitch episode. A true story. Maybe we should we should do an episode that's just called True Stories. True Stories. Yeah. I don't know if that just borderlines on. Well, but that would that would that... actually not that would be a season, not an episode. Okay. Yes. So that is, um, you, you know, you need to be servicing your machine at home, and we think you need to get it professionally serviced too. And I think we told you what you definitely can do at home, and then what you can, you know, do otherwise. Uh, you know, if you want to take some risks. So to answer Amy, I think it was Amy Coxhill. Uh, and I believe Amy Coxhill is also the originator of the Ho Clothes thread uh, in <laughs> self sewn Wardrobe. So she is a valuable member uh, of the group. and A valuable contributor. A valuable contributor. I, I think that yes and yes and take all those things in, into, into consideration. Your time, your cost, da 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 And in the next episode, we'll get into things like wait times at repair shops, costs at repair shops, reputable repair shops, et cetera, et cetera, okay? That's right. All right. Well, you can find us on Instagram. We are at ZD Sewing Studio. And you can follow Mom's Aerial Exploits. She is at ZD Donahue. And yeah, everybody. Okay, so what I want you to remember after you've taken that machine apart and you have put it back together and there's extra parts left over, I want you to remember to so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.